Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we're gonna tackle the subject of the rise of lonely single men. So this article just came out recently from Psychology Today, and I have seen it all over TikTok. Of course, I have to take a look at it as someone who talks about men's issues on YouTube, and I've also covered this subject before. A few months ago, I made a video about male loneliness and really just talking about the subject in general, why men are lonely, what is taking place in our society that's causing men to be lonely, along with some helpful suggestions for anyone who maybe felt like they needed it. Um, I'm obviously a woman. I don't know what it's like to be a lonely man. I will never claim to know what that's like because I simply don't. Um, that's just obvious. So I came across this article because a lot of people were reacting to it and talking about it over on TikTok. And to my surprise, mostly women were talking about it and basically just blaming men for everything per usual. The title of the article is The Rise of Lonely Single Men and I decided to do a little bit of digging. And I stumbled across another article that was kind of in response to the original article that is titled, Straight Men, If You Want to Find Love, You'll Need to Do Better. Let's talk about it. So first what I wanna do is take a look at the original article from Psychology Today and basically just kind of go through it, gather our information, and then go to the other article that I found. So this says, dating opportunities for heterosexual men are diminishing as relationship standards rise. Men represent approximately 62% of dating app users, lowering their chances for matches. That's nothing new, we knew that. If you are struggling with dating apps, there you go. That's just another one of the million reasons why it's impossible. Men need to address skills deficits to meet healthier relationship expectations. Younger and middle-aged men are the loneliest they've ever been in generations and it's probably going to get worse. Over the last 30 years, men have become a larger portion of that growing group of long-term single people. And while you don't actually need to be in a relationship to be happy, men typically are happier and healthier when partnered. Here are three broad trends in the relationship landscape that suggest heterosexual men are in for a rough road ahead. And then it goes to say dating apps, relationship standards, and skills deficits. Dating apps, we already know that. I'm not gonna go into it because it's just completely skewed to be um, easier for women and women have way more options and matches on there than men do. So they have an influx of options and therefore think they have more options and they all pretty much are going after the same group of men. So that's nothing new. Relationship standards, it says, with so many options, it's not surprising that women are increasingly selective. I hear recurring dating themes from women between the ages of 25 and 45. They prefer men who are emotionally available, good communicators, and share similar values. And that's that sounds good and dandy. Those are that's like the bare minimum of what you should be looking for. Someone who is emotionally available, someone who's a good communicator, and someone who shares similar values to you. That's like a no-brainer. That's what every healthy relationship should be founded on, right? And I'm going to get into I'm going to get more into that when I go over the other article. And then skills deficits. For men, this means a relationship skills gap that if not addressed will likely lead to fewer dating opportunities, less, less patience for poor communication skills and longer periods of being single. The problem for men is that emotional connection is the lifeblood of healthy long-term love. Emotional connection requires all the skills that families are still not consistently teaching their young boys. Talks about leveling up your mental health game, going to therapy, it means seeing intimacy, romance, and emotional connection as worthy of your time and effort. That I agree with. Ultimately, we have an opportunity to revolutionize romantic relationships and establish new healthy norms, starting with a first date. It's likely that some of these romances will be transformative and healing, disrupting generational trauma and establishing a fresh culture of admiration and validation. Men have a key role in this transformation, but only if they go all in. It's going to take that kind of commitment to themselves, to their own mental health, and to the kind of love they want to generate in this world. Will we step up? And I do think that there are a lot of men out there who are not putting in the effort, who aren't even showing up for themselves or putting in the effort in themselves. So why would someone else want to date you, right? I think there are a lot of people who play the victim and like to point fingers. However, I don't think that some of the responses to this article even began to consider the role that women play in this as well. Because when you hear from the outside that the top three things that women are looking for are someone who's emotionally available, great. Good communicator, great again. And share similar values, triple threat, great, great, great. Uh, but sadly, that's not what a lot of women are looking for. They're looking for maybe those three things and a checklist of a million other things 
that are sometimes a little bit unrealistic. And I think it's important to talk about that too. Uh, because it takes two to tango, right? I've seen so many videos on TikTok about icks and the way that a man is standing in a photo and the way that he's scooting into a booth and really just writing men off for the dumbest, stupidest, smallest little things, minuscule things that are so irrelevant in the grand scheme of things if the guy is emotionally available, a good communicator, and shares similar values to you. But they're writing men off because of these little things that don't matter and don't make any sense. And we have a whole generation of young people that are just perpetuating this cycle of, oh yeah, ugh, now I care about that with the guy I'm dating. Now I'm noticing all these icks about him, the way he chooses food, the way he holds his fork. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So. It's gonna take work from both sides, not just men to make a change in the dating game. But anyways, enough with my rant. Now I'm gonna take a look at the other article because just the title, I was like, what is going on? Straight men, if you want to find love, you'll need to do better. I already know how this is gonna go. Heterosexual men are seeing fewer dating opportunities because women are demanding higher relationship standards. But as Kate NG says, isn't it time single men rose to the occasion instead of accusing women of being too picky? Yeah, unless you're a woman who's actually being too picky and you need to look at yourself and think, okay, if I'm not going to find anyone who's perfect, so clearly I'm being too picky. It should be no surprise that an article going viral from Psychology Today has found that it is a shift towards healthy relationship standards that poses the biggest hurdle for heterosexual single men right now. The article titled The Rise of Lonely Single Men intended to highlight a growing problem, a 2020 study which found that loneliness is greater in men than women, with young men most vulnerable to becoming lonely. But as one Twitter user pointed out, one of the points in the article is that loneliness has been exasperated by the diminishing dating opportunities for men as women seek those higher standards. Cue the pylon. Women are increasingly selective because dating apps offer a vast number of options. I hear recurring dating themes from women between the ages of 25 and 45, he wrote. They prefer men who are, again, as I said before, emotionally available, good communicators, and share similar values. And then it says, now this criteria hardly sounds impossible to meet. If we boil it down, desiring a partner who can be there for you when you need them and treats you with respect is the barest of the bare minimum. If these are new relationship standards, I dread to think how much lower the bar was before. But if this means that women are finally realizing they deserve better than toxic, narcissistic, men than more power to us. And I just want to state that in no way am I minimizing some of the behavior that I see towards women on social media, even towards myself as a woman on YouTube who makes videos for men. People have said horrible, demeaning, disgusting things to me. So in no way, shape or form am I trying to say that men don't do those things. But I think it's important to understand that not all men are doing those things. It's a very small percentage of the comments I get, like 1% maybe out of the full 100 of percent of the comments that I get are vile, right? So there's no denying that this is clearly happening online. I see horrible videos, I see horrible comments, even to myself. So trust me when I say I understand that this is taking place. However, I don't believe that it's the majority and I don't really know if that's the biggest problem that's happening in the dating market right now. And I'm also not going to strictly blame women because I think, again, it takes two to tango and men and women are playing a role in the not so great dating climate that's taking place right now. But I do think one of the, the big issues here is that a lot of women have incredibly unrealistic standards. They're going for the men who are over six feet, the men who make six figures. Men between the ages of like 20 and 40 that make six figures that are above six feet is 2%. 2%. So then obviously it would make sense why there are so many single men. And you can say all you want about men needing to step up and men needing to, you know, put more effort in and do whatever. But for a lot of women, that just means grow five inches, make sure you're above six feet and make more money. It's not necessarily about being more emotionally available or emotionally secure. There are so many amazing, incredible, great women out there who care about those three things that were mentioned in the Psychology Today article. Being emotionally available, being a good communicator, and sharing similar values. Those are undeniably three of the most important things that you should be looking for. If those were the only criteria, criteria that we were going off of, then women wouldn't turn their nose up at simps and nice guys, right? What about all the women out there who hold men to the highest standard 
possible, but then in return hold themselves to incredibly low standards. And I'm not, I'm again, I'm really not trying to blame women or men solely for this issue. I love women, I really do. I love men, I really do. That's why I advocate for you. But it's like, come on, you have to at least recognize the role that you play here. Where is the accountability for both sides? I did not see a single TikTok that said anything about women playing a role in this. And I don't think that the women with crazy unrealistic standards prefer the men who are emotionally available, good communicators, and share similar values. A lot of these girls go after the guys who treat them like crap, who are emotionally unavailable, who can't communicate, who ghost them, who leave them on red and text them at 10 p.m. to come over for a hookup, okay? There are so many women that go after the wrong type of men and then say, well, there's no good men. No men are emotionally available. No, good, no men are good communicators. When in reality, you're just going after the wrong ones because you're going after the percentage of men that get all the attention from women so they feel like they can act however they want and do whatever they want and treat women however they want because they're getting women anyway because you're the ones going after it. Make sense? It also says, the article has gained traction on social media with many women pointing out that the increase in healthy relationship standards has led to a decrease in dating opportunities for straight men. Taking aim at the criteria listed by women for potential partners, one person said, the bar for straight men is the literal ground and they will still tunnel underneath it, another added. Women just aren't desperate enough to settle for garbage men anymore. But what garbage men means to one woman might mean just that he doesn't make enough money to another woman and she feels like she deserves someone who is over six feet who makes all this money and can buy her everything. So I don't know. I don't necessarily think that this is the main cause. I think really what it is is social media and this feeling like we have all these options at our fingertips. Um, and women constantly getting validation and attention from men on dating apps and just online in general and having more people to choose from. They can hand select who they want because they have more options. And most men don't have the luxury of doing that. It's just the way that it's always been. And I think it's been this way for quite some time, but I think it's become even more of a big deal because of social media and dating apps. And there are some things in this article that I do agree with. I do agree that being a good partner means being open with your thoughts, your feelings, and your needs while holding a space for your significant other. And then it says things like, until they stop mansplaining and listen for once. There are a lot of guys who don't do that. Not all guys do that. And then it goes on to talk about Andrew Tate. <laughs> The straight man's reputation is not helped by people like the Big Brother star and lifestyle influencer Andrew Tate, whose views about women being a man's property are so misogynistic that a charity this week called for TikTok to remove him from the platform. The internet has done a huge disservice to straight young men, many of whom are isolated and told that their singledom has nothing to do with them and everything to do with the wrongness of women. The exploitation of loneliness is how incels came to be one of the most damaging movements in modern times. And in no way, shape or form, I don't want it to come across like I'm saying it has nothing to do with you because it does. As a man, it does have something to do with you. But at the same time, it also has something to do with women. And I think both genders play a role and I don't think it's fair to then say that men are the sole reason of singleness. There's a lot of women who are single too, so. Responding to the article via Twitter are a number of men who insist that women are too picky and have double standards. They claim that they actually have great personalities and women just don't wanna date them because they aren't good looking. Which, it's not all about being good looking. I think appearance plays a role in attraction, obviously, but I don't think it's everything. You have to have a good personality. You have to have something going for you. If you want to be with this amazing, incredible, supportive, kind, beautiful woman, why would she want to date a guy who doesn't take care of himself, who isn't making any money, who is lazy, who has no drive, who has no work ethic, and isn't doing anything with his life? Why would she want to date a guy like that? She wouldn't. So it's also about taking accountability for yourself, understanding where you fall short and how you can be better because no one else is going to do that for you. No one's gonna come save you. You have to do it for yourself. So I'm not trying to say that all the, all the blame should be placed on women because I don't think that that's fair either. I think you have to see where you stand in the race of dating. You know, if dating was a race where everyone was running around, where are you? Are you at a point in the race where you could get the girl that you want? If not, what can you do to get there? How can you start to be someone that the person you wanna be with would also want to be with? Be what you wanna attract, I think that's important. But again, I do think that there are women out there who have very unrealistic standards for men 
and I think that that should be taken into consideration. In general here, I have been advocating for healthy, happy, mature relationships since the start of my channel. I don't do the dating game bull crap. I don't do the toxic manipulation. Most of the manipulation toxic videos I have reacted to on this channel have been made by women. Talking about how to manipulate men, how to be toxic with men, how to make him do this and this. And so how can you look at all that and not say that women are playing a role in the toxicity and manipulation that is happening in modern day dating? The proof's in the pudding. Oh, this also says that men are saying women are just too complicated. These same men will proclaim, ignoring the dozens of women telling them exactly how they want to be treated with respect, dignity, and tenderness. Yeah, you know, I get a lot of uh, men telling me, you know, you don't know what women want. Don't take dating advice from a woman. Don't ask a fish how to catch a fish. But what I'm telling you is from the perspective that a lot of women want to be caught. You know, if the don't ask a fish how to catch a fish thing was true, it would mean that women don't want to be caught, but they do. A lot of women do. And I'm telling you how to do that on this channel in a respectful and kind way. And that's not always going to resonate with every woman out there. Maybe a woman's not looking for a great guy and wants a guy who's emotionally unavailable, who's gonna screw her over and cheat on her and do all this crap. And in that case, you're just weeding people out by being mature, by being healthy, and by not playing all these toxic manipulation mind games that I see so commonly on TikTok and all these things now. So moral of the story here, just to wrap things up, I think men and women both need to recognize the role that they play and really take accountability and understand, you know, am I being too picky? Are my expectations that I have for men too unrealistic? Do I really care if he's over six feet, if he checks off every other box on my list? If the answer is yes, you're a little unrealistic. And that's okay, but you just have to realize it and try to work through it, okay? Same with men, you know, if you're like, I don't understand why I'm not getting the girl of my dreams, I want to date this supermodel, and you don't have a job, you're overweight, you don't put any effort into the way that you look or you feel on the inside or the way that you treat women, what makes you think you're gonna get the woman of your dreams? If you're in my comment section making disgusting comments towards me, calling me a bimbo, telling me I'm the worst person on the planet, when I'm trying to help you, how are you treating women who aren't trying to help you? Just a thought. So anyway, I leave you with that. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. If you like this video or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. Be what you want to attract, guys. Look inward, take the accountability with yourself, but also know that there are girls out there that just will not like you sometimes because of very surface level, shallow things. The same way, you know, men might not like women because of surface level, shallow things. So what I want you all to do is make sure that you are taking accountability over your life and yourself, putting your best foot forward, being the best that you can be. My channel is a one-stop shop for literally all that from grooming to fashion, to being a better you on the inside, to gaining confidence, believing in yourself. I cover legitimately everything you need to start working on yourself and seeing the potential that you have. Um, you know, I think every good relationship starts when you have a good relationship with yourself first. And sadly, I don't think a lot of people have that, men and women. And I think that's another thing that's causing a lot of issues today. So again, let me know what you think down below. I would love to get a conversation going. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys over on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.